Russia, China, and North Korea have frequently found themselves in conflict with the majority of global powers, facing sanctions, criticisms, and isolation for their policies and actions. In response, these three countries have forged a strategic partnership challenging the existing global order. A contentious aspect of this collaboration is the weapons deal between Russia and North Korea, provoking international outrage and concern, particularly following recent allegations against Russia. The allegations involve Russia's cooperation with North Korea to escalate the war in Ukraine, sparking condemnation from the international community. In the UN Security Council, where Russia holds veto power, members such as Britain, France, Japan, Malta, South Korea, Slovenia, Ukraine, and the United States denounced Russia for three waves of deadly air strikes on December 30, January 2, and January 6. The attacks, reportedly utilizing K-23 solid-fuel rockets, may have caused significant damage, including the destruction of Ukrainian army logistics bases and valuable tanker trucks supplying fuel and ammunition to the front lines. Russia's acquisition of KN-23 missiles, short-range ballistic missiles with the ability to fly at low altitudes and maneuver to evade defenses, has worsened the conflict in Ukraine. With a range of about 450 kilometers, these missiles can reach most of Ukraine from Russian territory, presenting a challenge for Ukraine to retaliate with similar weapons, as it lacks its own ballistic missiles. Despite international sanctions prohibiting North Korea from exporting its homemade rockets, the partnership between Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un suggests a willingness to defy sanctions and escalate the conflict without fearing a serious response from Ukraine and its allies. The transfer of KN-23 missiles to Russia constitutes a clear violation of UN Security Council resolutions that prohibit North Korea from selling or transferring any weapons or related materials. This raises concerns about the implications of the deal for regional and global security and stability. The actions of Russia, China, and North Korea collectively challenge the established world order, posing risks and challenges that requires a closer examination of the truth behind their shocking weapons deal. It presents a significant menace to both regional and global security, revealing North Korea's readiness to share its perilous technology with other rogue states or actors. Furthermore, it undermines diplomatic endeavors aimed at denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula and peacefully resolving the conflict in Ukraine. According to U.S. National Security spokesperson John Kirby, Pyongyang supplied Moscow's forces with rockets and launchers, specifically the K-23, an inertially guided ballistic missile typically launched from a wheeled vehicle. With a range of about 640 kilometers and precision within 35 yards of its target, the K-23, while not a superweapon, closely resembles Russia's Iskander ballistic missile. Both missiles are designed to fly at low altitudes and maneuver mid-flight to evade missile defenses, capable of carrying conventional or nuclear warheads to target military bases, infrastructure, or cities. Ukraine's primary air defense system, the American-made Patriot PAC-2, can effectively intercept Iskanders. However, Ukraine has only three Patriot batteries, likely deployed in key cities such as Kyiv, Odessa, and Kharkiv. This leaves other cities vulnerable to ballistic missile attacks. Notably, Russia aimed its initial K-23 attacks at Zaporizhia in southern Ukraine, a city lacking Patriot protection. Zaporizhia is a crucial industrial and transportation hub hosting a nuclear power plant that supplies electricity to the region. By providing KN-23 missiles, North Korea contributes to Russia's missile arsenal, aiding it in sustaining the exceptionally high salvos launched since last month. Moscow's objective is evident. Overwhelm Ukraine, which has a limited supply of air defense batteries and missile reloads, with more missiles than it can effectively counter. Ukraine faces a serious dilemma in responding to the K-23 launchers. Presently, Ukraine possesses domestically produced ballistic missiles, but their range is limited to approximately 120 kilometers, insufficient to reach the suspected locations of the launchers within Russian territory. Kiev has reassured its allies that it will refrain from attacking inside Russia with the air-launched cruise missiles acquired from the United Kingdom and France, or the ground-launched rockets obtained from the United States. Although these weapons could potentially target the K-25 launchers, deploying them carries the risk of escalating the conflict and eliciting a stronger response from Russia. 
Ukraine has alternative options for striking the K-25 launches, but their viability is uncertain. Ukraine manufactures its own long-range attack drones, such as the Barakar TB-2 and the Neptune, capable of carrying guided bombs or missiles. Additionally, it has reproposed its old S-200 surface-to-air missiles into 480 km range surface strike weapons, known as the Sapsan. However, doubts arise regarding the effectiveness of these weapons in swiftly and accurately neutralizing a K-23 system on the ground. The mobile nature of K-23 launchers allows them to relocate rapidly after firing. Moreover, there is uncertainty about Ukraine's capability to detect a K-23 before or shortly after launch to effectively target the launcher. The K-23's ability to fly at low altitudes and maneuver in flight to evade missile defenses poses a challenge, as it can reach its target within minutes, providing minimal reaction time for the Ukrainians. There are concerns that Ukraine lacks adequate radar coverage or intelligence sources to locate and track the movements of K-23 launchers. As a potential asymmetric response, Ukraine could target Russia's rear areas inside Ukraine, such as occupied Crimea, using missiles, drones, or special operations forces to inflict casualties and deter further aggression. However, Ukraine faces limitations in its own munitions production, relying on allies for the majority of its needs. Yet, these allies have been hesitant to provide lethal weapons or impose substantial sanctions on Russia, facing internal and external distractions, with the United States being particularly unreliable as a significant ally. Despite receiving a limited supply of Army tactical missile system rockets from the US, Ukraine has witnessed no indications of replenishing its missile arsenal, which is depleting rapidly under the constant barrage of Russian missiles. The White House's reluctance to supply Ukraine with substantial quantities of highly potent weapons, because it constitutes a significant challenge. Ukraine requires more sophisticated and effective weaponry, including anti-tank missiles, anti-aircraft missiles, and electronic warfare systems to defend itself against Russia's aggression. Despite this pressing need, the White House has exercised caution in delivering such weapons to Ukraine apprehensive that their deployment could escalate the conflict and elicit a stronger reaction from Russia. A more substantial impediment arises from pro-Russia Republicans in the US Congress who for months have obstructed the White House's proposal to allocate $61 billion for arming Ukraine in 2024. Both Moscow and Pyongyang have previously dismissed allegations of weapon transfers, asserting them to be baseless and fabricated. They deny North Korea's supply of K-23 ballistic missiles to Russia, which are purportedly used in attacks on Ukrainian cities. In a Security Council meeting on January 10 discussing the situation in Ukraine, Russia's envoy referenced an unnamed Ukrainian Air Force official who reportedly contradicted the claims made by U.S. National Security spokesperson John Kirby. Kirby had disclosed that Pyongyang provided Moscow's forces with rockets and launchers. The U.S. has been accused of disseminating false information without proper verification, with Ambassador Vasil Nino accusing Kirby of lying and spreading propaganda. Furthermore, Russia contends that the U.S. is supporting Ukraine's aggression and violating Russian sovereignty. In a counter-argument, Washington's alternate representative for special political affairs acknowledged that the United Nations confirmed death toll in the nearly two-year-old war has reached 10,000 Ukrainian civilians including more than 560 children. He stated that this figure represents the human toll of Russia's invasion and occupation of parts of Ukraine, coupled with its relentless bombardment of Ukrainian territory. Ambassador Robert would emphasize that this tally continues to climb due to the escalation of Russia's air attacks. He found it appalling that a permanent council member is blatantly violating council resolutions to assault another UN member state. Ambassador would urge the Council to take decisive action to halt Russia's aggression and hold it accountable for its crimes. According to South Korea's Ambassador, Wang Jungkook, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, DPRK, by exporting missiles to Russia, used Ukraine as a testing ground for its nuclear-capable missiles, disregarding Ukraine's territorial integrity and the safety of its people. Despite denials from Russia and North Korea, he noted that some weapons experts believe the missiles used in Ukraine are K-23, which North Korea claims can carry nuclear bombs. Wang informed the council that one of these missiles flew 460 kilometers, equivalent to the distance from the North Korean city of Wonsan, 
where missile launches often occur, to South Korea's major port city, Busan. He emphasized that from the Republic of Korea's perspective, these launches amount to a simulated attack, providing valuable technical and military information to the DPRK, potentially motivating it to export ballistic missiles to other countries and generate additional revenue to fund its unlawful nuclear and ballistic missile programs. Following this statement, Wang urged the Council to take action against both Russia and North Korea. Japan's envoy also contended that the actions of North Korea and Russia not only violated Council resolutions, but also posed a threat to destabilize the region. Ambassador Yamazaki Kozuyuki described the situation as completely outrageous, with the international community demanding the adherence to Security Council resolutions by a permanent member of the Security Council. The question posed is what will unfold next. Whether any international body will be able to impose sanctions on Russia and North Korea, or if these actions will become something the world eventually accepts, akin to other actions Russia has undertaken thus far. What are your thoughts on this matter? Share them with us in the comment section below.